There's like a good and evil story here that takes place in a yard in the back of Derek Chauvin or Dark Derek Chauvin. Derek, Derek Chauvin. Chauvin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so we watched a cool cat. Let's put this in like huge exaggerated quotation marks. We watched a cool cat movie tonight. I think we watched the original one when it came out. I got the DVD. I showed it to you. Julian at the time was like a kid, like a little kid. Loved it. You know, we watched it like pretty much every day for a while. And that, that was, what, five, six years ago that movie came out? Cool Cat uh, Saves the Kids? Yeah, we we were obsessed with Cool Cat for a long time. I mean, we watched it a lot. We watched it with Julian sober. We watched it drunk many times. <laughs> we just watched it at random times during the day. We had Cool Cat's poster hanging in the living room. I mean, we worshipped Cool Cat. We worshipped everything Cool Cat. We quoted Cool Cat. We, we still quote Cool Cat. We still quote Cool Cat. We showed Cool Cat to Jessica, and she was laughing uproariously. Alice found humor in it. I mean, Cool Cat is like a legitimate, like, cult classic film. Well, I remember when, when I first met Miranda, and she was like, oh, I love kids' movies. That's all I watch. I'm like... Like, literally the second night she came over and watched a movie with me, I popped in Cool Cat. I mean, like, it, it's a fun movie. It's exciting. It's the type of movie that, yeah, it's bad, but it's really fucking fun. It's, it, it has this, you were kind of talking about this, this, like, infectious sort of, like, energy to it. Yeah. Where it's upbeat, it's, it's kind of stupid but also just just really fun just pure fun six years later we get a 20 minute in quotes film um, yeah well and we know it's a film because Derek Savage says in the credits a film by Derek Savage he doesn't say like a short movie or like an instructional or educational movie or an educational short no it's this pretentious term film a film by Derek Savage now when we go over Jonathan and I I think can probably like agree on exactly how much work and how much money went into this project let me tell you this so we've had this debate going for a while and we haven't reviewed this movie yet but we had this debate going for a while about whether or not Angry Asian Murder Hornets was a movie okay if if Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus is a movie, then Angry Asian Murder Hornets is an epic movie. Okay? Well, it's this is not, not a, a movie. This is not a fucking it's movie. A, it's a short film, you know? Well, Derek Savage didn't even put the word short in there. He just said it was a film by Derek Savage. But... Like we'll get into we'll get into the details of exactly what's going on here because it actually doesn't take long to summarize this, but I think what we were that kind of the subject that we were riffing on was the massive discrepancy between the enjoyment of the first cool cat outing and this. Things have gone bad for Derek Savage. Maybe he just had a really, really, really rough 2020 with coronavirus. Maybe he lost a lot of friends. Maybe he lost some relatives. Maybe he was fallen on hard times and didn't have much money to do this project with. But this is not the same, like, that spirit of infectious energy and joy that Jonathan was alluding to with pertaining to the first movie, that is completely absent here. There is no joy here. This is depressing. <laughs> Besides uh, a couple things. It is yeah. laughable. I mean, it is laughable. We were laughing, but <laughs> for not for the same reasons that we laughed at the first Cool Cat. Uh, I, I think we were laughing because, you know, it was... Stanley Kubrick famously said, 
when he made Dr. Strangelove, he said, the reason I made it a comedy is because the subject matter is so dark that it would be too depressing to watch a serious treatment of this subject matter. So I made it funny. It's kind of like, that's kind of how I felt. It's like, if we sit here and try to take this seriously, we're going to die of boredom and depression. So we're going to have to find something here to laugh at. And that's what we did to get through it. I don't know. Cause I mean, there were like, okay, it's a cool cat movie. There's fucking editing mistakes. There's bad acting. That stuff I, I legitimately did laugh at, you know? Right. Like, when the kids are shouting their lines and talking over each other and it's just horrible and then there's, like, a bad editing mistake or, like, the white balance fucked up and they didn't reshoot it. That stuff I kind of laughed at, but, like, yeah, it, it did kind of lose the... I don't know. the Maybe it was lightning in a bottle, the first Cool Cat movie, but it did lose that for me. This one... This movie... <laughs> is the product of a lot of behind the scenes problems. I don't know how, I don't know a whole lot about it, but from what I can tell, Derek Savage made some enemies over the past five to six years since the release of Cool Cat, including the guy who originally voiced Cool Cat and played Cool Cat and was in the suit. Um, they are no longer friends. They are on, last time I checked, bad terms. So Derek Savage takes over that voice. So that guy's out. Um, he couldn't get any, like, Vivica A. Foxes or, like... Um, yeah, sorry, guys. The, yeah, the, no. The, 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 D, the, the D-list celebrity appearances, that they he couldn't even muster that much here. He couldn't get a single, yep. like, forgotten... That's gone. Yeah. It. And like, okay, so it's like Jonathan said, like, I don't know if the, if the guy who was in the Cool Cat suit and the guy who voiced Cool Cat in the first movie were one and the same, but... They were, I in, think. In this, yeah, they were. Derek Savage is in the Cool Cat suit, I'm, and well, he I'm does, sure he is. and he does the Cool Cat voice, and he does the villain's voice, the Dirty Dog voice. Now, he did find another actor to put on the Dirty Dog costume, so... Okay. All right, we'll give him like okay. If the total cast, <laughs> let's tally up the total cast. So the total cast is Derek Savage as Derek Savage and as Cool Cat, and then there's two young um, Hispanic girls who and one of and I was gonna say I had this theory because in the first movie there was like a, a Hispanic girl about what like eight nine years old. And she couldn't act. And she appeared to be just like Derek Savage's neighbor who he invited over to act in his movie. I have a theory that <laughs> the two young Hispanic girls in this are children of the same neighbors. But, like, That's they're just, like, possible. younger children. And they can't act either. But they're like, way worse. The other girl was at least fun. Yeah, they're and so funny. They're, yeah, I mean, she she like was a bad actress, but she was kind of like in the spirit of the thing, and like she kind of like you could tell that she was like taking Derek Savage's direction seriously. Because so Derek Savage was like probably he said to the girl in Cool Cat Saves the Kids like, okay, you need to act like Cool Cat's really cool. And you need to be really enthusiastic and happy about hanging out with Cool Cat because he's cool and you guys are friends. And then the girl was like, okay, that I can do that. So she did her best to do that. This is different. Like, <laughs> the two girls in this movie, they can't act their way out of... Name your metaphor. They can't act their way out of anything. <laughs> they, they're they so they're bad. They're incompetent. This they're is, really hard to watch. <laughs> They're the worst part about this movie. We all know that as a well, general... Yeah. I mean, we all know that as a general rule that kids can't act. But, like... I've seen some bad child actors in my life. I've seen bad child actors in bad movies. I've seen bad child actors in good movies. This is some of the worst child acting I've ever seen in anything. I there. Can I sidestep really quick and just say something? Look, I... I know that's a that's like a thing that like you know 
kids act horribly, and usually they do. But honestly, over the years, I've seen a lot better kid actors. I feel like that's not a good excuse anymore, and you people need to direct them properly. Okay? Right. You know what you need to do? You need to watch any of the interviews, any of the making of segments of The Florida Project. Find out how Sean Baker got those fucking kids who have never acted in anything in their lives to act, like, realistically. Okay? And then make your movie. And don't tell me that kids can't act at all. Like, it's possible. You just need to direct them right. Well, I have a theory about and that. these kid, What? What? Well, have you heard of the English film director, Mike Lee? No. You know who he is? He made, um... He made Secrets and Lies. He made, um... Naked. He made um, Topsy Turvy. He made uh, Mean Time. I think that was the name of it. But anyways, but but he had a an approach to directing where he wouldn't actually write a script. What he would do is he'd write very detailed scenes and scenarios, and then he would discuss them in in detail with the actors that he had hired to be to act in his film. Mm-hmm. And then he would have them kind of improvise according to scenarios that he had devised. Sean Baker did the same thing. That's the person I was. And I feel about. yeah, and I feel like that's yeah. probably the best way to to get kids to act naturally. That being said, I've still seen other kid actors act well with scripts. With script, but but there may be may have been some like looseness there and some like um, you know, ability to ad lib and. Well, because, you know, kids, kids like just like, you know, flat out straightforward delivering a script. I mean, that's got to be tough for a child because the mind of a child doesn't really work that way. It's a developing mind and kids are kind of impulsive, you know, and they live in the moment. So it's difficult for a kid to just memorize a whole script and recite it in, in a natural way. It's almost like they haven't experienced life enough to be able to do that. So... I feel like maybe good child acting always has an element of improvisation in it, but I don't know. It's just it's a theory, but <laughs> Derek Savage did not. But Derek do that. Savage didn't do that. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Yeah, there's like a good and evil story here that takes place in a yard in the back of Derek Chauvin or Dr. Derek Chauvin. Derek, Derek Chauvin. Chauvin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean I have Derek Chauvin on the mind, so you know. Um, but uh, but no. We should provide some sort of framework for what was, what, the very very simplistic and basic plot that was going on here. I, mean, I don't even know if you can call it a plot. But okay, the, the simplistic plot is that Dirty Dog, the villain, wants to infect kids with coronavirus. <laughs> kids are afraid of coronavirus. Go to Cool Cat, and Cool Cat protects them from Dirty Dog. Who's trying to infect them with coronavirus? Except he doesn't actually protect it, them from him at all. But anyways, well, that that's I mean that's the that's the plot, right? Am I missing anything? <laughs> and then it they is. they quote unquote rap, which we'll get to. Holy God! Anyway, but like even like the basic like so for this plot, you have to like forgive a lot of stupidity for this this already idiotic plot to even work at all, <laughs> because. The plot itself assumes that these two girls know absolutely nothing about how to protect themselves from coronavirus. Like, seriously, when they introduce the girls, the girls are like, <laughs> I'm scared of coronavirus. I don't know what to do. Well, what no, are we? They're, and they're like, what are we the gonna... news. It, they're yeah, just but... sitting there watching the news like, you know, all seven and nine year olds do. They're just sitting there on the floor watching the news and they're like, the coronavirus is bad. The news anchor's like, the coronavirus is bad. But I know a friend who got it. And then they're like, I'm afraid. Like, is this at the start of the pandemic? Like, Maybe. What? Because I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, so either their parents are, like, the worst, most negligent parents ever, and they never <laughs> talk to their children about, like, basic ways to protect yourself against the coronavirus, such as putting on a mask when you go out in public, washing your hands when you come back from being in public, you know, keeping a distance from people. They didn't know these these two characters knew didn't know any of that. They're just like, 
coronavirus is out there and it's killing people and I'm scared. <laughs> and then they're like, I don't know what to do, but Cool Cat's cool and he loves kids. <laughs> so they're like, we're just going to go outside. So the two girls go outside and then Cool Cat's just fucking there. Like, yeah. what? Was did, he like casing is, the place? Was is he just he, sitting well, there? Well, is he like is he like telepathic and able to move himself like long distances to just be at that house where these two girls are talking about Cool Cat at the exact moment they leave their home? What the hell? But so these ki- these two girls are horribly neglected by their parents and knew absolutely nothing about how to protect themselves. Hey, it could have been the start of the pandemic. That could have been the first and, news and report. Then, but anyways, so <laughs> then they go outside to the back of Derek Savage's house to hit the the big lawn or public park or whatever the hell it is. There's a big fucking lawn. And I hope you like the lawn because the rest of the movie the takes whole, place there. The whole twenty minutes Ugh. that we get to endure uh, takes place on this lawn. Okay. Okay, there were lo- let me say this. There were <laughs> there were lawns in the first movie, okay? But it wasn't the whole film. Like, you know, they went to a parade, then like Cool Cat runs across the street away from the lawn. Like the lawn is not the forefront. In this like that's literally all they had. Like the lawn. And it, it kind of makes me question why this took 6 goddamn years to make. Well, No, well, any Cool Cat movie. If this was the production value of your Cool Cat movie, why was this not made earlier? Well, this didn't get made in six years. Look, look. Well, no, but I mean a Cool Cat movie. Yes. Well, Derek Derek Savage, I am telling you right now, Derek Savage made this in an afternoon. This was made There's no way it took more than, like, a week to film this. There's no way. That's generous, too. I would say three days. At most, three days. And dude, and like other than the that other than the lawn behind Derek Savage's house, there's like a, two interior shots. There's Derek Savage in his office who makes a cameo appearance, and he does the same thing he's done in other Derek Savage movies, which is pretend to type on a computer. <laughs> and I always wonder, like, Derek. Do, do you know how to use a QWERTY keyboard? Like, do you know how to type? Can't you just type something for real? Like, can just be typing something real instead of just, like, mashing your hands in an obviously fake way on a keyboard? Just just type. Have you not... Do you not type, t- like, tweets and other things? Like, just type. But he wasn't doing that. He was fake typing, and he showed up for, like... Yeah, don't, I don't you, know. like, type on the YouTube that someone is, like you know, infringed upon your copyright, <laughs> even though they didn't. Like, I, don't, aren't you used to this, Derek? We have so much to get to. I feel we, like this, yeah, there's so There's so much. This is going to end up being long, but <laughs> let's just take it, let's just take one thing at a time. Because I was, I was saying, other than the lawn or pup or park or whatever it is behind Derek's house, other than that, you get two interior shots of somebody's house. You get the two girls in their house watching TV and then you get Derek Savage in his office for like 20 seconds talking to Cool Cat. Other than that, it's the backyard of Derek Savage's house. Okay? Yep. <laughs> that's that's the setting. It is a yard. Okay? A yard, so, park, whatever. So the girls go outside and they meet up with Cool Cat. And they tell Cool Cat what they said to the TV screen with like poor man's sickly looking Barack Obama. <laughs> talking about coronavirus and they're like we're scared what do we okay. do can I, can I talk about that really quick yeah the, that, the, what news anchor seriously says coronavirus is really bad I know a friend who had it is that what news anchors is that how they behave that is how they behave according to Derek <laughs> Savage's mind but no, actual news anchors, I don't believe there are any anywhere in the entire country, including uh, millions of, uh, you know, local networks. I don't think any news anchor anywhere talks that way. Yes, anyway. But, but yeah, they go out to the yard, and then, you know, Cool Cat is saying, oh, I'll protect you, and then he teaches them, this is important, <laughs> okay? He teaches them how to wear a mask, all right? So... <laughs> 
Now, look, I'm going to... So, okay, hold up. First, we need to get... Okay, this is going to take a second, Graham. Hold up. <laughs> I'm, buckle in your seatbelt. I won't interrupt you. In I car. promise I'm not going <laughs> to... Okay. I listen. All right, so first of all, the, the debate between whether or not... Okay, so either the parents are horrible and they have not talked to their kids about the coronavirus, or this is the first time that the coronavirus is being aired on television. Like, this is the first day of, or two of the pandemic, right? So right. we're dealing with one of those two scenarios. Okay, so then the kids go outside and they're like, Cool Cat, what do we do? And then Cool Cat suddenly has all this knowledge about wearing masks and how to protect yourself from coronavirus. So that's a, like, possible logic flaw right there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so he... <laughs> So then he's like, well, you need to wear your mask. And then the little girl, I, here's another logical flaw I just thought of. The little girl has a mask on. So actually, now that I think about it, this is well into the pandemic. Who just had masks laying around? You know, so this is well into the pandemic. So you're right. The parents are negligent. The parents are negligent because the kid does have a mask. But if the but this doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait. So the so the parents are negligent. Oh, so don't tell her kid. A, don't tell their kid about the pandemic. <laughs> but yet they buy them a mask. What did the five seven year old go to the store and just buy a mask? No, the parents bought it for. Her. So none of this makes sense already. But anyway, so then. God damn it. And then cool. Okay. So cool cats like it's because Derek Savage, didn't, he didn't think any of this through. He didn't think about this script. He didn't at all. Anyway, I feel like he's the type of guy who just, he sits down at his typewriter and he gets really excited and he just types it all out. And when not, doesn't think as he's writing, oh, this'll be great. He Maybe doesn't he types like he does when he fakes types. And he's just like, this'll be great. Click, 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 click. Wow. You know, and, like, the actual writing process of good writing is arduous and painful. You have to go back and reread what you write. And then, like, when you go back and reread, you find flaw after flaw after flaw. And then you have to figure out how to correct it. And you have to find, like, flaws in your own logic and, like, inconsistencies in your language. Like, writing is not easy. Yeah, based on his editing... Um, he does not go back and look at his Yeah, scripts. no, this was just, like, a stream of... This was, like, something that, like, Derek Savage rattled off in one afternoon. He, it was just a stream of consciousness thing that he wrote in, like, half an hour, and he didn't go back and reread anything. He was just like, oh, yeah, this is great! And, uh... <laughs> there's a bunch of logical... And just, like, he just pointed out, yeah, it's like... <laughs> The girls are going outside to learn from Cool Cat how to deal with coronavirus, and the girl already has a fucking mask. But just found out about But they're going to find out how to put on a mask from Cool Cat, even though they're already... One of them's already fucking Wait, wearing one. I came up... Fuck, I came up with another logical flaw. And then... <laughs> remember... Remember the girl's, like... She had the mask over her chin, like the South Park thing, like chin diaper, you know, when people wear the mask on the chin. Yeah. And she's like... I saw people wore this on TV. I saw that this is how you wear your mask, like on TV. You literally just found out about the coronavirus from a news report with a guy who wasn't wearing a mask. What are you talking about, like the people on TV? You just found out about the pandemic. Right, and... <laughs> and what do you mean you... Like people on TV. First of all, what news anchors are wearing masks on their chin? None of them, okay? Yeah, so that and doesn't it's like, make sense. And it's like if your parents haven't told you anything about the pandemic and they don't care and you just learned about it on the TV, then where the fuck did you get the mask? <laughs> I mean, look. There's, like, so much wrong in just those, like, two minutes of film. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so then... I really hope Derek Savage listens to this, because, look... He'll be triggered and mad if he listens to this, and I really hope he isn't. Because, like, we love you, we want you to make good movies, but holy shit, dude. Well, I feel bad for Derek Savage, because it's like, it's like you said earlier, it appears that he's, like, fallen on hard times and he's lost friends. He has, like, far, far fewer, like, associations than he had before, he can't get D-list celebrities in his movie. He's kind of alienated right now. He needs help. 
And it's like, part of the reason that um, you've fallen on hard times, Derek, is because you're putting out shit like this where <laughs> we can, like, deconstruct, like, eight different logical fallacies in two minutes of your 20-minute movie. Like, I feel like we could take any two minutes of this and we could do the same thing. Which I don't even know if we can do. Or this thing well, is going to be, like, three, four hours. Well, there's no point. I mean, it's no, like... No, there really isn't. What we're establishing here is that this movie makes no sense because it was probably written, like, tossed off in an afternoon by Derek Savage just typing frantically at his computer for, like, an well, hour or weird, so. And Well, but then there's weird things where, like, he'll teach the girl how to wear a mask. But then the other girl doesn't have a mask, and Cool Cat <laughs> has a mask at the end of the movie, but not in the mask scene. Also, they're not standing six feet apart from each other. Well, so like, it, and I want to say this: Look, I think this movie presents itself. I think what Derek Savage wants this to be is a kind of instructive movie. But look, he this, does because he he said that he wanted it in like school libraries. This and stuff. movie yeah. is not instructive of fucking shit. Like, <laughs> you know, you could it like he, you how to wash your hands. He could have thrown. Well, kind we got to get to the hand. Oh, we'll get to the hand washing. <laughs> <laughs> the hand washing seat. This is gonna take forever. I Wait, literally, we even I to never, the water balloon. I never in my life thought that I would have, I would watch a movie in which I would be able to critique the way that people sing "Happy Birthday," but that <laughs> happens here. But let's let me just say something first. This movie is not instructive for shit, because okay, so everybody's outside for most of the movie, and like. <laughs> All that Derek Savage had to do was, like, a little bit of basic research. Like, he could have talked about the difference between coronavirus transmission outdoors versus indoors. And he could have said, well, it's actually a lot safer outdoors to have your mask off than indoors. But if you're indoors, you want to have that mask on because transmission is 16 times higher indoors than it is outdoors. Did you know that? Yeah, that the, no, tra- the they, transmission yeah. rate of coronavirus outdoors is one sixteenth what it is inside. I mean, it's stuff like that that could have been pointed out. Like if Derek Savage wanted this to be educational, he could have done some research and thrown in some facts and, t- and statistics. I would have respected what he was trying to do here. But literally, the only instruction you get is shit that you already knew, like. You need to wear a mask, and nobody's even fucking wearing a mask except for, like, a few seconds in the whole fucking movie. So nobody's even wearing a mask, and then there's a hand-washing scene. That's it. Like, that's how you address coronavirus, is, like, occasion, like wear, a, wear a mask for, like, five seconds out of 20 minutes of your life, and then spend, a, a like, you know, sing happy birthday twice while you're washing your hands. That is Derek Savage's coronavirus instruction. That's it. There's nothing else. And th- okay. he doesn't even he doesn't he doesn't give any other suggestions. No statistics. No facts. No like safety precautions you can take. He doesn't even talk about social distancing. Did they even mention the six feet? In no, this? they didn't mention. They didn't the mention six it. Feet. They they didn't. What the fuck, Derek? The other what, thing, what is this? Even on like a more minor note, but I think it's actually more important. Is that like, yeah, he didn't mention all those things. He didn't have, you know, text scrolls come up on the screen. He didn't like have those things where it's like, wear a mask or then, you know, <laughs> and he had nothing like that. But like what he did have was lacking because like washing your hands is not good. You need to wash it with warm water. How do you miss that? How do you tell kids just wash your hands and sing happy birthday? Well, if you do it with cold water, guess what? It doesn't fucking kill anything. You need to do it with warm water. Right. And you don't even say that. How hard is it to write, Cool Cat says, use warm water or else it won't kill the coronavirus. That's all you had to write in your goddamn script. And like, you try, you're trying to say this is some instructional movie, Derek. It's not. It's not. You're fa- You failed. I'm sorry. I'm getting mad. This can is we, fucking stupid. Can we just say something? Can we just like agree on something right now? Is that yes. Derek Savage is not qualified to educate anybody on anybody, anything. He's not. He's not qualified to educate anybody on anything because in Cool Cat Saves the Kids, 
he failed to effectively instruct kids on how to deal with bullying because like he said like he basically suggested in cool cat saves the kids demean your bully tell them that they don't have any friends and nobody likes you and that'll fix the problem okay that's wrong okay and then in and then and then and then in and then in Derek savage's uh you know gun you know gun safety he was completely as you pointed out was completely unsafe and was holding the gun wrong and put his entire cast at risk by not holding the guns it, properly it was bad so he can't instruct on gun safety he can instruct on coronavirus because he doesn't even he doesn't even give the most basic instruction of washing your hands with fucking hot water just turn on the tap and wash him with cold water and sing happy birthday. Wrong. Twice. Like, so he can't... Well, he didn't even say cold water. He didn't say anything. So Derek Savage is unqualified to instruct on anti-bullying procedures, on gun safety, and on coronavirus safety. It sounds like you shouldn't open your goddamn mouth at all. <laughs> <laughs> at least... Look, Derek. I mean, know, uh, what? How much hope do you hold out that he's going to tell us how to prevent a school shooting, dude? I, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm really afraid about. I mean, I can't wait. But like, this is my thing. Is that like we're going to be sitting here like a six months or a year from now <laughs> talking about Cool Cat stops a school shooting, explaining how Derek Savage did not instruct <laughs> children properly on how to. Deal with the school shooting. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing. Because he's not going to... Because Derek Savage doesn't know how to teach anybody anything. Derek, we... <laughs> look, man. Look, buddy. We know you mean well. Like, you want to help kids with bullying. You want to help people protect themselves with, like, guns and, you know, <laughs> knives or, or, you know, the taser. We, that's great. You want people to wear masks. You want people to wash their hands. <laughs> like, I, I I, condone all that. I thank you. But you're <laughs> fucking it up. You're really fucking it up. You're not helping. <laughs> you're not helping at all, dude. Like, like do some research first. And I mean, uh, what is he doing all day? Like, if, if this... I do if, wonder. <laughs> if, cool, if Cool Cat is his obsession, and like, he seems like he's like a guy who's made some money and he lives comfortably so he can just kind of kick back and relax. And it's like, what are you doing with your time? You you can do Google searches and you can find information on how to be instructive on these subjects that you want to comment oh, on. Oh, hey, you should and stay six feet away from people. I should put that in my Cool Cat movie. Like, how hard was that? Yeah, or... <laughs> uh, it's, I will say though, like in the gun self defense thing, he he had some instructional moments towards the beginning of the movie on how to load a gun and all that that like was better instructional like wise than this, but it still was like terrifying. But anyway, yeah, but because he still wasn't pointing the gun right. We're focusing but, uh, on uh, the failures of his coronavirus instruction right now, and he failed well, completely because. There yep. is so much he could have said he could have said or mentioned or alluded to that he did not do. Like uh, dude, I feel like if you showed this movie to a group of kids and then you asked them at the end what did you learn, they'd be like, "Uh, wash your hands?" He could have even <laughs> I mean, he didn't even throw in anything about like symptoms. Like he could have been like, "Hey yeah. kids, like if yeah. you if you if you, during the coronavirus pandemic, if you're waking, if you wake up with a fever and you don't feel so well and you feel kind of hot and sweaty, <laughs> maybe you want to go get a test." But he didn't even say that. Like nothing. Look, <laughs> maybe I, I have a little theory here. Like Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to like weave a little theory here. It's just a, a little theory. So did you did you notice Jonathan that Derek Savage seems to have a kind of obsession with bullying? Yeah, because he like does. like there were some parallels to Cool Cat Saves the Kids here where like the plot was all about dirty dog bullying Cool Cat and the two girls. And it's like it's almost like Derek Savage was like I want to make a, a coronavirus thing 
But at the same time, I don't really want it to be about coronavirus. I just want it to be another bully thing about the dog and the cat. And, like, like he has these... It seems like Derek Savage has these, like, strange obsessions in his mind about bullying that he has to keep going back to in all of his film projects. And they kind of derail what he's trying to do. Because, like, he actually could have... You know, he could have, like, worked in some, like, decent suggestions for kids about dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. But he did, he just, he chose to, like, go off on this tangent about, like, a guy in a bad dog suit bullying a guy in a bad <laughs> cat suit. And it, it, it kind of, to me, it kind of, like, became his preoccup. it became Derek Savage's preoccupation was the bullying plot at the expense of actually instructing people about coronavirus. Yeah, and I think a right? perfect a perfect example of that that proves your point like completely is when like the the, the dirty dog character, which by the way, I do like the mask. Yeah, that was that, like, that was cool. That was one of my favorite things about yeah. the about the movie quotes. I'm making quotation marks with my fingers cuz it's not a fucking movie. But yeah, the dog mask was cool. But yeah. God. Anyway, so like, to your point, there was the the part where you know the girls go out and then like suddenly Dirty Dog appears and has a water balloon. He's like, I'm gonna throw it at Cool Cat because Cool because cats hate water, and I'm also gonna cough on it. So when it hits him, he gets the coronavirus. That's what I mean. Is it, to your point, he's focused on the bullying thing. Not focusing on the facts of coronavirus, which is I'm pretty sure if you cough on a balloon and throw it at somebody, they're not going to just get coronavirus. Well, I know it's just a silly thing, but still, like, dude, you're making a movie that you want to be in, like, school libraries, and this is how you're doing it. That's how you're going about it. You Like you said, you, you care more about the bullying than the actual, you know... Yeah pandemic that we're dealing with you know well can we also mention a logical flaw there which is that dirty (laughs) dog dirty dog thinks that coronavirus is a scam but he thinks that coughing on a balloon (laughs) and throwing it at a kid is gonna give them coronavirus i just realized that shit (laughs) oh my god it's a scam it's not real fake news it's a hoax but I'm gonna give it to people, and it doesn't okay. exist. Dude, audience, <laughs> audience. Uh, Let, I mean, like, I can't. You're right. I didn't is, realize how our minds are, our brains will explode before this podcast is over. But guys, <laughs> listeners, listen. <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't. That's the dumbest fucking flaw. <laughs> Dirty Dog. Dirty Dog is the villain. Okay, so Dirty Dog thinks that coronavirus is a scam. He thinks it's fake. But he thinks... uh, Somehow thinks that... If he coughs on a balloon and throws it at a kid, that's going to give them coronavirus. So, the Dirty Dog thinks... At the same time... He holds these two thoughts. He holds these two thoughts in his head. He thinks, on the one hand... I have coronavirus and give it to the kids. And he thinks, on the other hand, that coronavirus is a scam. (laughs) Derek Savage, if you are listening to this, God damn it, man. I I know you have your pride. You have your ego. You cut off the original voice of Cool Cat, which was a horrible mistake. Derek, what the fuck? Like, (laughs) how is Dirty Dog... How does the Dirty Dog's character make sense? Tell us. T- give us a mean tweet. Email <laughs> us. Whatever. Uh, uh, what the fuck, man? I guess like, all you could... How? Okay, to the, <laughs> let me play devil's advocate. And and Derek Savage isn't a devil. But, you know, like maybe he's... Okay. Jonathan, and, it's, it's... I'm trying it's to a help metaphor. him out. Devil's advocate doesn't mean that Derek Savage is a devil. I'm trying to help Derek Derek out. Derek Chauvin is a devil, who I accidentally referenced earlier, but go ahead. Okay, so Derek Savage, dude. Okay, okay, maybe maybe Derek Savage, and I'm giving him a lot of leeway here because it's probably not true what I'm about to say, but maybe he was like 
trying to do some sort of analogy, like, almost towards, like, uh, towards, like, Trump, where he's like, oh, it's a hoax, it's scare people like that, but then they know it's real? Maybe? Probably not, honestly, but maybe. I'm being really generous right now in, in saying that might be a, a possibility. I mean, I feel like I would have to... <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> I feel like I would have to like actually sit down with Derek Savage and talk t- to him to find out if that might be what was going on through his head. Because, I, I'm sorry, Derek Savage seems like a really nice guy. He, do- he I would really, totally chill with him, man. He, he seems I like... I would barbecue with him any day. Yeah, he seems like a sweet man, but I, I don't know if he has that level of subtlety. No, he doesn't. No. Dude, I... Look. Oh, and I, I want to say before we move on, because yeah. we, we have to talk about the hand-washing scene. We have to talk about the wrapping. We have to talk about a lot of stuff. This is going to be long, guys. Buckle in. But, but I, already, I want yeah. to say... Okay, uh, we're 42 minutes into this podcast, oh which means that we've already talked about... Oh, fuck. We've already talked about Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus twice as long as the actual... <laughs> Well, yeah, we did. Of course, we knew that was going to happen, but... I feel like we could probably continue this for, like, four hours. We could. we can't do that. No, we can't. But, like, okay, so... Okay, so the the water balloon scene... Then the... Okay, let's just get to the happy birthday hand washing. Let's get that out of the way. Then we can get to the wrap. Okay, so... How about you take... Here, I'll take the wrap. You can take the hand washing. Go. Wait, I have to do the hand washing first? Yes, yes that, that comes first, right? Well, yeah. I need your help on this because I missed Fine, a detail. I'll do it. What? Well, well, okay. <laughs> so, the two girls, after they receive instruction from Cool Cat on how to deal with coronavirus, they go back into their house and they, and they wash their hands while singing Happy Birthday twice. Yeah. Now, my question to you is, did... Did Cool Cat... Because I didn't catch this. I, I missed some of the dialogue. But did Cool Cat say to the girls, you need to sing Happy Birthday twice? Yes. Oh, he did say that. Okay. Yeah, he said you have to do it twice. It's easy to remember. Right. Just sing it twice. So there's a couple criticisms I have about the Happy Birthday... A couple. I, I can't even... <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to say, look. Jonathan and I have watched... We have seen, we've actually had debates before about like what constitutes the worst scene ever made. <laughs> this is a contender. <laughs> there, there's so much about the scene that's awful, and it didn't need to be. Like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do something for the audience, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a hand washing sound, and then I'm gonna sing Happy Birthday, and I'm gonna show you how this scene could have been okay. <laughs> All right, so this is me washing my hands and singing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Graham. Happy birthday to you. Okay, that is relatively painless. All right, these two girls, after they were told by Cool Cat that they needed to sing happy birthday twice while washing their hands. Okay. This is what they did. And they didn't even sing happy birthday correctly. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to recreate what they did. Can I do that or go? F- do we do this on this podcast? Or? No, honestly, like I could be one of the girls and you could be one of the girls cuz there was two of them. So you want to do it with me? Let's do it. Let's go. Happy and, birthday and don't, time. Don't forget. Yeah, no. Don't forget when they did the third line where you're supposed to say happy birthday, dear name. Yeah. They just said happy birthday to me again. No, they say happy birthday to me the whole time. Are you ready? Because we uh, have to do this let's twice. Do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. We're going to recreate the scene. This is <laughs> one of the... Let's do it. Okay. May, this may be more painful than <laughs> the savage... Hopefully not, but like, dude, this Let's is just so go. awful. Let's try it. Ready? All right. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to me. me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me again. 
Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. That was that was like that was it. That was barely a dramatized version of what occurred. These kids were screaming oh, happy oh. birthday and like were looking at the camera while washing their hands while with washing cold their water. Washing hands with whatever <laughs> cold water. Well, we don't know if it was cold, but it was not. Well, they just turned on the tap and then Yeah, they, they didn't wait for it to warm up. They but that's the thing is like <laughs> what this movie could have done is like for instance, okay, is the happy birthday a 10 second song, 15, whatever. That's how you do it, right? You wash your hands for 20 seconds or 30 or I, I do it longer, but you know what I mean? So like happy birthday is supposed to be like, let's say 10 seconds of hand washing. You do it twice. It's 20 seconds. Good. Something like that. Why they could just, have said that. Why don't you just tell the kids to like count to 40 so that they're like learning counting better. But uh, yeah, you could learn counting. You, But that's the thing is you could do things like you could be like. You can explain to kids, well, you know, a good like you should wash your hands for 20, 30, whatever seconds. A good way to do it is to sing happy birthday twice because that's the equivalent of 30 seconds or what you could say those things. And then like when they're washing your hands, you could have a little timer to articulate it. Like you could you could educate people. You know? <laughs> like I, like I'm thinking of better ideas and this movie is going to make money. Maybe, probably not, actually. I don't know. I, well, I was stupid and Derek, bought it. Derek Savage is, dude, you're one of the dupes. <laughs> oh, I was duped. And I'm going to continue to be duped because I'll probably continue to buy his movies and, and see what he's doing because it's funny. And, uh, by the way, uh, I, you know what? I feel like we've done enough with the hand washing scene okay I mean, let's move on because we're going on 50 minutes here and we got to get on to the wrapping dude the wrapping i'll take this okay well, can so, i can i say before yes. you take it no because yeah, yeah. i'm gonna let you go you can rap you no can, i'm not gonna you can no, talk I, about the wrapping i, I, or I don't want to rap uh, <laughs> no, uh, no i was saying oh. there's no fewer than three three rap songs in this there are movie. three rap songs three in this movie three exactly. there's one in the Two in the movie and one in the credits. Yep. So there's two almost back to back. In a 20 minute film. So, I mean, Derek Savage, you can say what you want about him. The guy loves his rap. Uh, <laughs> no, he doesn't. And well, I'll g- three songs in no, 20 minutes? No, he think, he think because he thinks that's popular. So he wants to put rap music in his movie. I feel like, well, okay, no, I'll, let, I'll let you go. Well, go ahead. have you seen Cool Cat Saves the Kids? Cool Cat loves to rock and roll. Like the, That like, wasn't a rap. That was a rock likes, and roll No, song. but what I'm saying is Derek Savage likes rock and roll. He has, like, the Aerosmith guitar. He's changed his mind. He likes rap. No, he's doing it for the kiddies. He's doing it for the kids. Because hip-hop is popular. I mean... If anyone says, like, have you heard this song? Isn't it cool? It's usually, like, a hip-hop song, right? Well, so Derek Savage, he has to get that message out about, you know, putting a mask on and washing your hands for okay, I'll try 40 to... seconds while screaming happy birthday. So, you know, you got to get those raps out there. Dude, the, the <laughs> rapping... The <laughs> rapping is honestly... Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's extremely jarring. Like, it is literally okay. mouth to, to the floor. Is it really this bad? Oh, my God. It is this bad. Can we... Dif- can, we can I just, like, jump in yeah. just for a second? Yeah. Go for and it. differentiate and <laughs> say that, like, the Cool Cat rap was one of the worst ever, but... But the Dirty Dog rap w- was better. It was better, yeah. Okay. The, the, the Dirty Dog but, rap But go on, better. because you're, you're kind of... Look, in the in terms of, like, old podcasts, like, analytics, Jonathan is the rap analyst. I, I'm I'm not I'm not as well versed in these things. Jonathan listens to a lot more rap than I do, so he he can he's the expert here. So I'm gonna def, defer to him. Well, if you want my expert opinion, he was completely off tempo the whole goddamn time, <laughs> <laughs> and didn't rhyme. Not that rhyming is a thing that you need to do, but when you rhyme half the time, and then you're <laughs> 
Look, when you <laughs> say the lyrics in the tempo that he's doing and like in the cadence that he has, you need to rhyme in order for it to stick together. This dude is literally like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> cool so cat. No, wait, I'm zooming the cool cat. He's like, cool cat loves the kids. Cool cat wants to help you from coronavirus. Like, he's, like, not rhyming, adding too many syllables. It's a mess. It is a goddamn mess. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> I might <laughs> I might insert just a little bit of the rap. Please don't DMCA me. Please don't. And if, if you do, I'll just re-upload it with a nut, with, with something else. <laughs> but, like, look, dude. Like you're an old fucking boomer white dude. <laughs> don't try to rap, goddammit. You can't do it. You can't. Stop trying. Stop. Oh my god. Like, it, it's so bad. It's like... Well, I have to say... Oh. I have to say this. Look, look. It wouldn't be cool, Cat. It would not be cool, Cat, if the rapping were good. But, like, this is... The rapping here was bad beyond the point of oh, like, excusing dude. it. Well, like, the Cool Cat Loves the Rock and Roll song was, but, like, somewhat well put together, right? Like, it wasn't the best song ever or anything, but, like, it was, like, a song where you're like, it. this is a song, this is a, this is literally the worst rapping I've ever heard. Like, I... Well, okay, so... In it, this It's song, kind of surreal in a way, because, is, because uh, some, somebody, somebody who had, like, Actually, the, the the production on the rap was not that bad. Like, somebody had a, a decent... He hired someone for Yeah, well, it. somebody yeah, had a good. decent keyboard and made, like, a kind of cool beat. And then, like, Derek Savage, who is the voice of Cool Cat in this, sadly, tried to rap over the the beat that was made, and it was just... Like Derek Savage's attempts to keep on point and uh, and rhythmic, uh, I mean, it was it was really painful to witness. Have you ever been in a situation where you had like the friend who doesn't really know about rapping, and then like maybe he'll make up some sort of like accidental rhyme in their head or something like that, and or like in some weird situation they're kind of forced to rap and then they try and it's off awful like they almost show you what they think rapping is but then fail have you ever done that like they're like oh i made a rhyme and then they try to rap it in like the duh 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 cadence it's awful it's it's not it It's really okay. I will say it was funny that they was, gave Dirty Dog that? the trap beat. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, anyway, well, the, dirty, the, the dirty the dirty dog rap was better. But um, well, what was the guy in the um? Who was the guy in the Bush administration? Who uh. In the George W. Bush administration, who had like who somehow find a way found a way to get rappers to rap about him, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, what? Do you remember the Carl Rove rap? No. Dude. Oh God, what? What? I have to look Dude, it up. Like later, in terms though. of like awful rapping, like the MC Rove rap, like somehow Carl Rove hired like a like a, a like a, a rap group to to do a rap about him. And then he was like, there was like, there's like video of him holding a mic and rapping. It, it was one of the most awful things ever, and it reminded me of Derek Savage trying to rap. But, anyways, the rapping, it, it's look. If you're not gonna watch this movie, and you're curious about any part of it, watch the rap. Watch the Cool Cat rap, the first one. It's pretty bad. And then the second one's kind of funny because it has dudes, do, the dude doing, like, you know, somersaults. Well, okay, wait wait a minute. But, but there is a cool cat rap, and it's awful. Yeah. But um, the, the dirty dog rap was a little bit different, I felt. Like, like... <laughs> I mean, 
Um, well, it, 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 it was bad, but it wasn't bad in the same way. Yeah, I mean, it. it's it, almost like he tried a little more to rhyme. And then, like, tried to keep his sentences, you know, down a little bit. Also, I felt like the production on the second, on the Dirty Dog rap was, like, a little bit more, like, strange and menacing. Like, yeah, like it, was a, it was, like, more of a trap beat. That's what I was saying. It was, like, a trap yeah. beat. Yeah, and whoever made it, like, there, there actually was somebody with talent involved in this, in this movie, surprisingly. And the person with talent involved in this movie was the, the person who did the instrumental parts for the raps. Because, like, even with the Cool Cat rap, like, Derek's, Derek Savage completely failed to rap effectively for the Cool <laughs> Cat rap. But the production was not actually that bad. And then the production on the Dirty Dog rap also wasn't that bad. The, like, it, like, it, it kind of... The, like, the... the the loop sounded kind of cool, but then, and, and I think Derek Savage's rapping was a little better on the Dirty Dog rap, but it was still bad. <laughs> but like, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, it was Derek Savage <laughs> trying to rap, so I mean, it, of course, it's bad. But why did he do that? Besides the like appeal to the kids, well, I you, really wish. Can you he attempt did. again? Because we have to cut out part of this, but like, yeah, can you attempt again? <laughs> How, can you do, do you have the like the lines of like the the cool no. cat rap? Like, Wait, which one? Do you somebody want me to needs do? to. Well, somebody needs to recite like, like I would do it if we could somehow get. I it I wish here. I wrote it down, but uh, well, which one? The original cool, the first one, the second one, or the third one? Because I remember part of the third one. <laughs> the third one, it was like then he hears his flows and they know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it wasn't really uh, it wasn't really real rapping. It was no, kind of like rhythmic talking. Well, honestly, okay, since since we can't really like exactly recite what Derek Savage was saying in the raps, I would encourage you to go. Hold on, YouTube there is video. a way. We have to pause it, but yes, we can do it. It's part of it really quick. Hold on. There's a cool cat rhyme that's easy to share. It's about being healthy and showing you care. Smart kids know it's cool to wash your hands. Wash there for 20 seconds is all a rapper should do. A good night's sleep is also important just to keep you healthy. I'm Cool Cat and I'm the coolest cat. All rappers know I got the righteous safety tips. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm playing the rap. I don't oh, give a shit. No. Oh my god, we just listened to it. I will say oh. that the rap does give me immense joy. You should watch for 20 seconds. That's all a good rapper needs to do. <laughs> I thought it was 30 seconds, but anyways. Oh, uh, oh my god. The rap is really fucking funny. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> hey, kids out there on... Okay, if you're a kid out there on YouTube and you find this review... <laughs> please don't listen to any of the advice that Derek Savage gave you about coronavirus. Just listen to us. Alright? Wash your hands for 20 seconds and do it in warm water, motherfuckers. Also, yeah, you should wear well, a mask I would say over your 30 nose. Thirty seconds. Well, well, Derek Savage. Apparently, he just thinks you should turn the turn the tap on, and immediately put your hands <laughs> under there, and then <coughs> and then scream "Happy Birthday" to me. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, I'm I almost see an inverted X song happening here, where we, we just like we have like a water sound, and then we're just screaming "Happy Birthday" to me for like sixty <laughs> seconds. Can but, I get to uh, one thing really quick? The dirty <laughs> dog creating the coronavirus so, situation. Oh yeah, we have to. Get, oh my oh, god! Oh no! I mean, I have to get to the bad special effect, but you you can get you can we can go into the details of Dirty Dog. And we haven't I'll, talked I'll about him much, you. have we? Dirty Dog. He's <laughs> well, we have. We've talked about his logical fallacy, 
self. Uh, but anyway, so like, yeah, what? <laughs> oh, Wait, no. what was Dirty Dog's logical fallacy? That he said it's a scam, yet wants to give oh, everyone right. coronavirus. That's yeah, the yeah. logical fallacy. Oh, right. So anyway, so yeah, like... That, that is a major logical fallacy. Sorry. Yeah. I, sorry I doubted you. Go ahead. <laughs> How dare you. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say this and then I'll hand it off to you. So like, Dirty Dog in the scene, he's like, he's like, I'm going to catch coronavirus. So he like reaches out his hand. And then just grasps nothing. He grasps air, and then he, like, pulls his fist back down, opens it up, and then he takes this, like, vial of, like, liquid, and then, like, drops it onto his hand. You know, and that then, was, like, a vape, right? I think it was a vape. <laughs> it was. I don't know what it was, but, like, I don't know what it was, it was supposed a, to be. It was but a vape. Yeah, he poured his vape juice onto his hand, <laughs> and then he created the special effect Graham will now talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so after... <laughs> so after Dirty Dog decides he's going to throw a giant coronavirus molecule at kids... This is a very dirty dog. I mean, that's nasty. But, like... So he decided he was going to throw a giant coronavirus <laughs> molecule at kids. So, so after he pours the magic vape juice on the coronavirus molecule, apparently it grows to, like, superhuman size. And then, and then like, he opens up his hand and there's, like, what appears to be a hacky sack <laughs> with red jelly beans, like, glued to it. They almost look like myconites. And he's like, I'm going to throw it at those kids. And so he throws he throws the hacky sack with the red jelly beans glued to it. And then suddenly the coronavirus, giant coronavirus molecule becomes a really bad CGI effect that goes across the yard. We talked about this earlier. This whole, whole film takes place in Derek Chauvin's <laughs> oh I, I can't do it. I can't get it right. Oh my god, dude! Is Derek Savage Derek Chauvin? Is that is that what's going on here, dude? Is that what it is? One of them murdered a fucking guy, and then one of them Derek Savage just failed. murdered. He murdered cinema, <laughs> but like, okay, so, so, yeah. <laughs> So Dirty Dog throws the coronavirus molecule across the Derek Savage's backyard. And then somewhere in the process of it uh, of it being a hacky sack with jelly beans glued to it, it becomes a really bad CGI effect. <laughs> and then it like soars across Derek Savage's backyard and then Cool Cat breaks it up with his fists. Uh that Apparently, Cool Cat punching the giant coronavirus molecule, that defeats coronavirus. That's it. No need for masks anymore or social distancing or any of that. What you need... I'm lighting a cigarette. What you need is for, is for Cool Cat to just punch out that bad coronavirus molecule and you're done. You've done what you needed to do. That is Derek Savage's message in this film. Derek, what are you doing? You know what he's doing? I mean, look. He's punting to his next short film. That's what he's doing. Dude, how long have we spent talking about this? I mean, this is like three times the <laughs> length of Derek's movie at this point. It's so bad that I've mentioned Derek Chauvin twice. <laughs> You've done it three times. But three. Yeah. Okay, so this is so bad that just because Derek Savage's name is somewhat similar to the name of the man who murdered George Floyd, I have mentioned that man's name three times. Derek Damn, Savage. that's a harsh, harsh uh, I, comparison I, there. I'm not comparing them, but it's... This movie punts to the next Cool Cat movie. Um, and this is how the movie ends. It ends on a very positive note where dirty dog asserts that he's going to cause a school shooting <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of your educational video that you want in school libraries is the <laughs> evil dog saying i'm gonna go commit a school shooting 
He really did. did, did I, I don't remember that. Did Dirty Dog say that explicitly? <laughs> well, okay. I remember this. I remember Dirty Dog's like, I'm going to get back a cool cat. And then right next to his face, it said, like, next movie, Cool Cat stops a school shooting. Oh. Dude. So Dirty Dog's going to cause a. Wait, he's going to do commit a school shooting yes. next. And then that's going to be the next, you know, movie. And then Derek Savage is going to sell that. And then he's going to combine both. And then he's going to sell that. Look. That's if, what's going to happen. If Derek Savage can actually put together a decent film that is longer than 20 minutes. Okay. I don't care what the subject matter is. I mean, I just want more cool cat. We're not going to get more cool... We're not... Look, the, the like age of Cool Cat Stops the Kids is gone. That actor is not coming back. It, forever, it's going to be Derek Savage pudging out in a fucking Cool Cat costume. Like, doing his voice all weird. Like, that's what it's going to be. There's no more fun Cool Cat. It's, it's dead. It's unwatchable. It's done. Like, yeah. the magic is over. We had our fun six years ago. It's not coming back. That's the sad reality of all this. Is it's not like maybe the third one's better, you know? Right. Like maybe they won't it's put aliens quite. in the next Indiana Jones movie. No. It's just going to be bad. There's no redeeming quality that this is pointing to. You ever find future. yourself wondering like what is going on in Derek Savage's personal life that causes him to like create these things? Actually, like, well, is he married? Does he have kids? I, I don't mean, know. What, what is going on with that guy? I don't... I don't know if he's married. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like whoever played the, the female cool cat in the first one... Like, he would have gotten his, like, partner to do it. Like, so it probably... He probably I mean, isn't married. Like where I he know. where he put somebody in the cool cat, cool cat costume and then put fake lips on them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I oh, missed, that was I another, missed that. Yeah. That's another thing I forgot to mention is like, mi- like Mama Cool Cat, Mama Cat was like mentioned in this, and Mama Cat was a character in Cool Cat Saves the Kids, but it was just somebody dressed up in the Cool Cat costume with fake like lipstick lips put on them, but like that character was alluded to in this quote-unquote film but we didn't see her yeah that was disappointing dude this movie really didn't actually try it really didn't try and like i mean derek savage knows people like cool cat they want to see what's next this is what we get Dude, I really hope Cool Cat stops a school shooting, which I want to see. I I really hope it's good. I really hope it's good. Please, please, dear God, like, do whatever you need to do to get the other guy back for the voice. You didn't cut it. I'm sorry. You just didn't. You can do the dirty dog voice, okay? You can have that. But... Look, just beg the guy who did the original Cool Cat voice to come back. Offer him money. If you have money, Derek Savage, people respond to money. He just say like, let's just like let it all go. I, I I'm gonna we'll we'll forget the whole thing with the, like the YouTube comment, you know, fight or whatever it was or Twitter Twitter battle. Like if Derek Savage is just like, okay, original Cool Cat voice guy, just come back. I'll pay you. Just, just do it. You can restore some of the beauty that was the original Cool Cat movie. Because you lost it here. I mean, this was... We, okay, we laughed at it a lot. But we did not laugh at it for the same reasons that we laughed at and loved Cool Cat Saves the Kids. This was a sad... Uh, this, was, this was a sad production. Yeah. This was sad... I know we're wrapping it up, but, like, I have something else to say about earlier. (laughs) This is important, dude. Just trust me. We forgot to mention the line. Do you know what line I'm talking about? 
where he says... No. Now, a lot of people, it's the one that we're like, we need to talk about this, when, like, <clears throat> Cool Cat's like, now, a lot of people have different opinions about the coronavirus, and it's important that you respect all of them. False. Factually incorrect, actually. Well, he said that after the villain <laughs> threw a coronavirus balloon at the kids and missed. Yeah, after... I thought the villain was supposed to say that it's a hoax, even though it's a logical fallacy because he believes in the coronavirus. But if if Cool Cat... Okay, so let's... Philosophically, let's just analyze this for a second. So Cool Cat is saying, okay, we need to respect everyone's opinions about the coronavirus. Why is he not respecting Dirty Dog? Why? There, that's my question to Derek Savage. Well, he he actually did respect Dirty Dog because they didn't do anything in response to him. They just, like... They called him a sissy girl. Very progressive of you, Derek. And, um... Yeah, but they didn't do anything in real retaliation. I mean, they had a coronavirus balloon thrown at them, which was intended to kill them, and they didn't even call the police, so... <clears throat> So, I mean, they didn't actually, like, do anything. Well, they didn't respect... They're not like, Dirty Dog, we respect your opinion. Like, they actively, like, antagonized him. Well, they respected his his desire to kill them by not calling the police on him. I guess. <laughs> it's still a stupid thought, because if anyone says coronavirus isn't real, or, you know, you, you can take... Uh, what was that drug that Trump said that you should take to prevent COVID, even though it only helps during some treatments? Hydro or something. Remdesivir? Yeah, something like that. Uh, false. You know, anything like, oh, this will be over by... Wh- what did Trump say originally? This will be over by Easter? Anything like that. You don't respect it because it's fucking stupid and not based on the data and evidence. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean... I think a better there, educational... Fi- Sorry to be... There there are opinions on COVID that you can't respect. No. Namely, yeah, right. namely ones that directly contradict scientific fact. Exactly. Those are the opinions you can't respect. Because the reason you can't respect them is because if you did respect them, people more people would die. Let's dig into this deeper. So, are you supposed so, to respect people who don't wear masks? Right. Because the point of masks is that, you know, if I wear a mask, I protect you. I'm not actually protecting myself. I'm protecting you from not breathing on you or coughing on you. Well, look, if if your ultimate ethical, if your ultimate ethical goal in life is to, is to, is to lead, is to um, produce a scenario in which the fewest possible number of people die... Like if that's what you consider ethical, if you consider, if you consider like an uh, an ethical, uh, uh, if you consider an uh, an approach to ethics to be producing a society in which the fewest possible number of people die, then there are certain perspectives on coronavirus that you cannot respect. Yep. Okay. Exactly. That's why I, I, I really didn't appreciate that line. That line should have been cut from the film. Yeah. Should have never been written, in fact. But. I mean, I think we it just it just goes back to what I said earlier, which is, like, Derek Savage is not qualified to instruct anybody on any subject. Like, <laughs> no, what he, he should do... I, I don't know. He seems to be a guy who has a lot of money. Like it, like from the interiors of his house that I've seen in his movies, he has decent, like you know, decent sized California home. He seems comfortable. I think he lives in uh, in Arizona. Derek, just make fun, yeah. cool cat movies. Just like stop trying to teach us about stuff <laughs> because you're not good at it and you don't know what you're talking about. And you've shown us that you can't even go through the basic steps of a Google search to find out 
you know, statistics and facts that are readily available about the subjects on which you pontificate. I feel like if, if like, Derek, if you got through this and you're not seething, like, hear us out. Like, if you do want to make the school shooter movie, please do research. Please. We'll help you. I mean, we'll help you. Reach just, out to us. Yeah. We're on Instagram. Like, I don't know our email, but just find a way. Comment, like, on our video. Be like, I need help researching the next project. Pro- we next project. Help you. We will do it for it. We'll give you notes. We'll, we'll tell you, like, maybe you should cover this, this, and this, and then you do your script. But, like, we'll help, dude. We'll help you out. We want the next Cool Cat movie to be good. We don't want to. We don't want to go through this again. Yeah, we're not going to help you with, like, the incompetent editing problems. I'll help. I'll help you with the editing. No, dude. because if you do that, because because if you make them too good, they're not, they won't be fun anymore. So, like, look, Derek, just continue with, like, the bad filmmaking, but, like, let us help you to research your films better so that... You're making, like, a hilariously bad film, but at the same time, you're educating people. Because this is irresponsible, man. Like, you can't put out a coronavirus educational film which instructs people in nothing, uh, you know, is completely illogical, uh, you know, has a contradictory message about respecting different points of view about coronavirus you can't do that during a pandemic you have to follow the science Derek that is the only respectable or acceptable point of view to have during a health emergency which is you have to respect health experts if you do anything other than that you're going to result in people dying so if there's somebody who watches your movie Derek Savage if there's somebody who watches your movie and takes it all to heart, that could result in someone dying. Because your your claims that you make in your film are not factually based, or they're 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 lacking in sufficient research behind them. And you are creating a potentially hazardous situation in which somebody is going to see your film, which is not instructive as an instructive thing, and take instruction from it, and then behave irresponsibly and unsafely as a re- as a consequence of thinking that your film was instructive when it wasn't. Stop presuming to instruct people on serious issues when you don't know what you're talking about, Derek. And <laughs> I mean, I, yep, that is. I get. Oh, yeah, there's one more thing. I mean, he can't... Look, can I just say before you talk... No, yeah, before I... Because Derek Savage wants to put himself forth as, like, a serious instructor on these issues, and he doesn't... You know, these are serious things. I mean, getting, getting coronavirus safety precautions wrong could result in somebody dying. If you don't... If you don't... If you really don't know what you're doing... And you don't know how to protect other people from this virus. You could end. You could result in somebody's. This could result in somebody's death. Doing the wrong thing could result in somebody dying. I mean, this is serious. So, like, get your shit don't, straight. Please don't put. Please don't put this. Please don't put your your product across. As an instructional thing about coronavirus, if you don't even address basic precautions in a responsible way, I mean, just don't. Just if you can't, if you can't even bother to do the most basic research on on uh, uh, reducing the transmission of coronavirus, if you can't even be bothered to do the most basic research, and all you can say is, sing happy birthday while you wash your hands, and this is how you put a mask on. If that's all you've got, Derek, talk about something else. You know, 
Why don't you have like Cool Cat teaches basic addition and subtraction or something like that? Something harmless. Don't talk about these serious issues anymore because you're not equipped for this. Because you refuse to do your research and you're putting out bullshit that is harmful rather than helpful. You're not helping anybody with this. This is dangerous. I agree. I agree. But at the same time, thank you, Derek, for giving us like an 80 to 90 minute podcast <laughs> over your 20 minute film. <laughs> um, oh. It's about to be longer because I want to get into one more thing. <laughs> so on his website, dude, I can't like look. <laughs> when I ordered Derek Savage's uh, DVD of this, um, wasn't much. 11 bucks. All right, whatever. Um, very fast shipping, I will say. Very nice. Now, th- this is something I noticed that was extremely all know. So, on the website when I ordered it, it had the pre-ordered the DVD. Only eleven ninety nine. Okay? So I pre-ordered it. But under that, it said, your name in CCFCV. What does that mean? That basically means, remember the Cool Cat Friends credits at the end? I told you to remember that. Mm. Here, for a limited time, get your name in Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus credits. Under the Cool Cat Friends section, only $25 to be a part of this film. So basically, you pay $25, bucks, you are in the credits of the movie, right? Now here, for a limited time, until, or it says till... April 15th, 2021. Okay? Now, first of all, on the actual, like, front page of the website, that's gone. Now, you can still find this. Um, you can actually still find this on a different page of the Cool Cat website. Okay? All right. Where you can actually still give him $25 and have your name added to the credits even though it is past the April 15th. The movie's already been released. Now, this is the problem. It's past April 15th, right? It's the 24th. Yeah. Let's look at my email receipts. Okay, first of all, I bought the movie on the 13th of April. I paid him 14.94, okay? When did it ship? It shipped the 14th. When did it arrive? Yeah, but you didn't pay the extra $25. No, but what I'm saying is the people who paid that didn't actually get their names in the credits of whatever version of the DVD I purchased. So he's saying, get your name in the credits until April 15th, but he's already shipping out his movie on the 14th? Oh, right. Yeah, that. (laughs) So if I look in my archived, when did I actually get the email? Or when did I... Hold on. Let me look it up. Well, maybe as he... produces nope. more dvds he adds in more names that's to the bullshit that means i get the one that doesn't have certain people who gave money it was delivered on the 19th dude the package here i'll even look in the history of the package i'm looking right now tracking history when was it picked up shipping label created okay the pick it was picked up on april 14th you see, it was picked up in Las Vegas on April 14th. So the UPS people picked it up a day before the ending of these people shelling out money to Derek Savage to get their name in the credits of the movie that they won't be in, at least in my version. Okay? So the reason that that one guy's name was in the end credits like eight times was because he contributed $25 eight times. Yes. Oh. So, yeah. um, And and you realize now when you look back on the end credits of of this film, like how short that list was. (laughs) Yeah, actually. I mean, really. There was maybe like what? 25 people, maybe more. I don't know. Derek. But just the fact that, like, it A, is still on his website. B, he didn't... If anyone 
gave their money. I mean, look, the DVDs obviously take time to make. It's not like you made it the day before, you know. Right. So the DVD was printed. So probably more people shout out money because he made a video on his YouTube saying like, hey, like get, last couple days I extended it, you know, last couple days to get your name before April 15th. And then he's he's already shipping out copies that have already been printed the day before <laughs> the end of that. Dude, that's bullshit. That's a scam. <laughs> So, maybe so much for the well-meaning thing about Derek Savage. Like, uh, can you explain uh, uh, that to us, he, please? I have facts and figures here. He really needs money. He needs money bad, I know, but, like... Yeah, no one no one contributed to the campaign, really. He didn't get his goal, at least. I mean, maybe it was just a case of... Um, Maybe he just hadn't had anybody contribute that $25 that he was asking for for a long time, and he just kind of gave up on it, and he was like, fuck it, I'll just start sending out the the DVDs before this deadline. Why would you, why would you keep the deadline, or he said he Maybe, extended the deadline. Why would you extend the deadline if you're not going to put the people's names in the actual DVD copies that you send out? You can't fool me, dude. I have fucking emails of, and I have the USPS of when it was shipped. Like, come on. Come on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, we should, we should definitely What do you do to up. address yeah. that, though? I mean, that's... <laughs> dude, he's done stuff like that before. There was the whole, like, YMS thing that happened. Do, oh, do you want me to tell you about that? I mean, he's a used car salesman turned yeah, filmmaker. Yeah. I mean, it's not... Okay, go ahead. No, so... He was... This guy... Uh, the YMS, Your Movie Sucks. He he reviewed Cool Cat. I think that's what made it popular on the internet. I'm pretty sure. So, even though he criticized the movie, Derek Savage was like, Oh, th- he gave good points. And he's like, I'm going to have him in my gun self-defense movie, right? Mm -hmm. So then what happened is that I guess there was all no on the internet with him and they had an argument. And then, so like on his fundraiser campaign, he was like saying like Adam is going to be in the movie and a whole bunch of people flocked over and donated so that could happen. And then he got mad at Adam and said, "Never mind, Adam's out in the movie. And then everyone who donated for that reason didn't get their money back. And then he didn't even make the goal and just kept all the money. He's done shit like this before, man. He's done stuff in this sort of vein, you know? Right. <clears throat> anyway, we should get just get to ratings, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you seem tuckered well, out by this whole thing. Well, I'm just trying to... I'm trying to think of an... Uh, uh, a response to make I mean look my I guess if you want to like kind of uh, theorize as to why Cool Cat was what it was you know seven eight years ago as opposed to what it is now you know Cool Cat was an exciting creative pursuit for Derek Savage, you know, seven, eight years ago. It, uh, it's purely a financial concern at this point. You can see from the, the lack of, of, of love and care and commitment that was put into this 20 minute atrocity that we watched that this is a cynical cash grab for, uh, Derek Savage at this point. It's what it is. It's become that for him. I almost feel like he wanted to really care about it, but he was so anxious about making money that he just rushed it. I yeah. almost yeah. think that was the case. No, I, I, I don't even think it's an almost. I mean, I think it's, it's probably a certainty. And um, that's Derek Savage's primary concern at this point is how much can I milk from this character that I created? Um, that's what he's doing now. He's ripping people off. He's being dishonest. I mean, that 
That's that's what his creation is to him at this point. I mean, I don't want to think that this way. Movie, about it, this movie, I mean, had, this movie had this movie had entertaining moments, but like, I didn't I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of um, like this didn't feel like a guy a guy with a big idea who just doesn't have the talent to realize it failing like i just felt like it was it was more cynical than that like it was kind of oh it was maybe way uh, more cynical you know how the end like just had all the dvds and shirts you can buy yeah like, i mean yeah like he's was... like promoting other cool cat products before the movie's even over it's like you could wait until after the end credits to do that but he didn't even do that I well mean, there was a just part like, in the song buy this buy this buy this do you remember the Cool Cat rap? The first one, he's like, Cool Cat saved the kids is a cool movie. You should go buy it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was so Yeah, shameless. and he's, like, advertising, like, T-shirts, like, in the end credits and before the end credits. And there's, like, this is the next movie and buy the next movie. And, like... <laughs> get the books, get the TV show that hasn't been made yet. Like... <sighs> and I don't even know, like... Look, I don't know anything about Derek Savage's life, but from what I could see, the guy's not in a good place. It, it didn't seem like he has. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to have like a uh, like a social uh, a social life anymore. It's like it's like where are you, where's your wife? Where are your kids? Like where's your family? Like what are you doing? I do know something he, like, about 60? his kid, and it's all no. Ah. Uh, Oh, oh, evidently his kid was like in the army and he died. At hey, least that's hey. the that's what he said was the reason for his behavior when he was triggered and copyrights strike someone's video. But that's what he said. He said his son who was in the military died. I don't know if that's true. I want to just go ahead and believe it. I want to, you know, what is, what is, what's the word? I want to be well, generous I, I, there and just say, okay. I feel like it would be difficult to tell a lie like that online and get away with it because, like, people have ways of re researching that. I mean, it's like, if he lied about a kid dying in the military, I don't think he'd be able to get away with that. A lot has been going bad for Derek Savage. I think a, some of it is his doing... Obviously not the son thing, but, you know, it, certain relationships he's had fairly clearly, you can kind of trace it back to his responses, his behavior. And all that has led to a product that was really cheap, quick, not a lot of thought was given to it, and was kind of depressing. Let's go ahead and rate it, I guess. But at least the dirty dog mask was cool. But the dirty anyways. dog mask was cool. We do like that character. We think you should come back. Also, I thought there yeah. was some. Uh, I, I this is like one more thing I wanted to mention, which is uh, the only. I thought the best actor in the movie was the guy who played Dirty Dog because, like, he actually moved around with some sort of energy, and he tried to like just gesticulate while Derek Savage was rapping. Uh in a way that conformed to what Derek Savage was rapping about. Like, he attempted. Like, whatever the... Whoever the actor was in the Dirty Dog costume did try. And they even showed after the end credits, they, they had like a... It wasn't a blooper reel, but it was like an outtake <laughs> reel, but it was just one outtake of like fat... Like, it was like chubby Derek Savage in a sleeveless <laughs> shirt, like, directing this black dude who was playing the Dirty Dog character. <laughs> and, like, actually, it was kind of strange because after Derek Savage was directing the guy in the Dirty Dog costume, he, like... They showed him, like, for a couple seconds, like, shoving him over, like... <laughs> Did you, do you remember that? Where he just, like... Yeah, he, like, he just, shoved, like, shoved the guy... And then it just cut off. I don't know what was going on there, but... Anyways, the Dirty Dog actor... The guy in the Dirty Dog costume, like, had some, like, decent, like, body language, but... 
Other than that, this was one of the worst acted things I've ever seen in fuck this movie, but... One more thing. Let's pass judgment one, a minute no, here. Yeah, one more thing. One more quick thing. Yeah, it's going to be have like some, two hours long. I don't long. care. <laughs> I don't care, Graham. I don't care. It's like I, the longest old podcast <laughs> for a 20-minute film. Go ahead. I have some advice for Derek Savage. <laughs> I do. It's important. Stop making movies. Okay, go ahead. No, just look, man. <laughs> like, when you're on the internet and you come across this lightning in the bottle sort of situation that you've created, you have to act on it while the. You have to strike while the iron is hot. Okay? You can't wait like six, seven, eight years. And then release something. The internet doesn't care anymore. That's why you don't have many names in your cool cat friends section. You you should have hit it earlier. You didn't, like, then it would have been like, oh, the new cool cat movie. Oh, the new cool cat movie. You know, to equate this to rapping, like you, you know, seem to delve into here. You know, there's certain rappers who they go off of singles and singles and, you know, they're, they're, sort of internet personas on social media and it literally their entire career is based upon will this next single you know strike well will people like it if not then you people lose interest very quickly like the cool cat thing no one cares anymore which is sad but i really do think that's the case you didn't you did not react well to the fandom of Cool Cat. Releasing the same movie under a different title with a couple extra minutes of footage or whatever didn't work. You know, like, I don't know what you're gonna do from here, but, like, the idea that, oh, I'll just sell Cool Cat shit is not gonna happen. Well, look, I I think... Look, I, I need to be realistic about Derek Savage. Like, the guy can't fucking write. And I think... I think he needs... He needs to, like, diminish his own ego a little bit, and he needs to let somebody who can actually write dialogue and write a script come in and help him write his next Cool Cat project. We'll help you, dude. We'll help you. We've both written stuff, like... Graham's an amazing writer. And I could even write, I write it. I've, I write scripts that aren't that bad, hopefully, you know? I could even I could even write Cool Cat in, like, the non-ironic, just, like, happy, like, enthusiastic, energetic Cool Cat style. No, we should leave like, all that up to Derek Savage. But, like, if he wants our help, we should just give him pointers. And, like, you should say this sort of thing. You should talk about this. Like, that's what he needs help. That's what he needs help with. He also needs help with the energy right. and getting because, a new cool because cat Because watching this was just sad because, I mean, look, you talked for, like, 20 minutes about a two-minute segment. Like, <laughs> you just, like, went on this rant, and it's, like, but it was completely justified because you saw these, like, logical inconsistencies... And you were just talking about one tiny segment of this incredibly short film. But, like, there were so many logical inconsistencies that we just realized, like, in just talking about this tiny little segment of the movie, it's like, wow, this guy really can't write. Like, he, he just... I mean, he's either not... He's either not, like, proofreading his own work... Or he's just fucking incompetent, and he just doesn't know how to, like, write and maintain any sense of internal logic <laughs> as he's writing. Like, he needs I think help. it's the latter, but we're here to help. Comment, message us, do whatever you have to do. We'll help you. Yeah, okay? I mean, because, if- because look... I want to say to Derek, to Derek Savage, if you're listening to this, like, Cool Cat Saves the Kids has, like, brought me and i know jonathan like hours and hours and hours of joy like we love that film it is it is like synonymous with like happiness and just like enjoyment of life and just letting the oh no in your life go and just like seeing like the bright side of things like that's what we think of cool cat and we didn't feel that when we watched Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus. We just felt sad, 
depressed. We feel like all we see is like a broken man going through hard times and filming 20 minutes of awful footage in his backyard with some (laughs) ratty animal costumes and some kids who can't act. That was sad, man. So, really quick, a rating system. Here's a knife. Be creative. The worst. Um, Basically, you know, your film was so bad, we just want to die. (laughs) Then there's all. Okay. All. Then there's ah, no. We don't need to go beyond that because it's not getting better than that. Then there's enye, which is okay. All right. There's higher ratings. You're not getting them. You're not getting them. So... Do you want to go ahead and rate this? Yeah, dude. This is an all. Oh. It's not a here's a knife because because Jonathan and I were like legitimately like laughing. I mean, we watched it twice. We were laughing both times. We did, there was no agony, right? Like we didn't we weren't just like <laughs> sitting there like slumped down and like unable to say anything or move. <laughs> Older. That has happened with movies before, but, like... The rapping was bad. But. It, the rapping was bad. <laughs> like, there was a point where I had my, like, face, like, completely buried in my hands. <laughs> but I was still laughing while that was happening, sort of, in a sad way. I was laughing. <laughs> so I can't give it an, a here's a knife. Because, like, here's a knife is reserved for the movie that just, like... That is so, like, agonizingly, unwatchably awful that I just want to die. It wasn't that. So I give it an oh. But like I said earlier to Jonathan, if Derek Savage made this movie any worse than it was, it might be a here's a knife. (laughs) If he had found a way to make it, like, more awful, it might have gone into that territory. Very fortunately, like, the really awful rap songs kind of kept us laughing enough <laughs> to the point where it gets an ol. So I give I it do, a, uh, like, I, I give it a low ol. Like, it, it is pretty fucking bad. I, look, I would have instantly gone into Here's a Knife territory if the film was exactly as it is, and then it promotes, like, like, non-truths. You know, like if it was going to say like, you know, if you, if you take hydrochloric, what is it? Hydrochloroquine. Hydrochloroquine. Like if you take that, it'll be okay. You don't need to worry. Like then I would have given it a here's a knife, but it didn't do that. You know, like it, when it it did, when it did advocate things, it advocated responsible things, but it was so like not helpful in terms of, uh, we already went over all the, we did, the, the lack of instructiveness, but... It gets an all for me, a very low one. Um, do In we, terms of being an educational <laughs> film, it gets a here, here's a knife. Like, <laughs> if you are viewing this as an educational film, this is a here's a knife. Because this is the worst fucking educational film <laughs> ever made. If that's what Derek Savage intended, man, you didn't instruct nobody on shit. Well, hell, okay. he claimed he wanted to keep it 20 minutes so that it could get into school libraries. Um, Dude, any school that screens this film to children needs to be shut down. <laughs> Sorry. And then, we'll get into that, though, in the next <laughs> Cool Cat film. <laughs> anyway, we, we got to go. What did you give it, though? Do you give, you I gave it an, an O. o. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. The same thing. The same. But do you thing give it you. like an O teetering on the edge of Here's an Yes, knife? I okay. do. Like, it's. And only because it's a sequel to a movie I love. Um, if it was just alone, like, I'd be like, whatever. But the Cool Cat is, has its own lore, you know, at this point. It, it's this, this small internet niche. It, like, I care about the original film. I love it. I own it. I own this now, but, you know. Um, okay, and Derek Savage, I want to, like, final parting message to you, man. There are people out there who love your character and they love you. And like you can your next cool cat like project does not have to be this bad. It doesn't. It does not have to be like you have people out there who can help you. 
you can let your pride and your ego, like, you can let that, like, you know, you can subdue that a bit. And you can let people who are have talent in areas where you just don't have talent. Like, where you have talent, Derek Savage, you have talent in the area of, you know, enthusiasm and, and, and joyousness and just sort of like a childlike naivety and innocence and, and you know, you know, like, you have that ability, but when it comes to, like, screenwriting logic and... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need help. Like, you he, need he help, need, well, I, I only mentioned one thing there, but, I mean, I'm kind of, like, running out of words here, but, like... I, Look, dude, it's like you don't any ha- other you don't filmmaking have, you process. Don't have to, you don't have to make film projects that are this pathetically bad. Like, you can do better than this. You this need is, to collaborate more. Like, that's what filmmaking There's really no shame like, in getting help. Me, you know? There's no shame in getting help. Like, you don't have to, like... You don't have to be like, I have to do Cool Cat all on my own. Nobody else can do this like I can. I'm the only one who can bring Cool Cat to life in the way it should be brought to life. No, Derek... You can get help. You can get help in terms of screen of just like simple logic in your screenplays, of writing better dialogue, of making things make sense, of shooting scenes in such a way as they're not logically inconsistent from frame to frame, where a child actor has a mask on and then suddenly doesn't have one on. Like things like that can or be one f- of them is wearing one and thing, the other yeah, is, like, things like that can be fixed by people who have experience making like movies like you don't have to it doesn't have to be this bad and you and like if you made something that was better than cool cat fights coronavirus that wasn't just like a 20 minute pathetic excuse for a film <laughs> then you probably would make more money this would be more lucrative for you more people would see it and you'd actually help people because I feel like Derek Savage is the kind of guy he like he wants to help people like he wants mm-hmm. to put out a positive message and like be a positive force in his community and in the in the in the broader community of people who see his films like you right now he's writing he's writing on the illusion that he's doing that yeah like he's like, like you're telling not himself, helping anybody. I'm helping people I'm doing okay when you're not But, like, you actually could. Like, imagine the amazing feeling you'll have when you actually make an impact. That's the thing. Is Think about that. Reach out for help. When you actually get that success, when libraries want to have your film in them, okay, that's when you'll actually feel like you've made a difference. And you can drop your ego. And I'll tell you that. I'll tell you this right now. Derek Savage, listen to me. Kids, kids, generally speaking, children do not like educational films. They don't like films that lecture them. But, like, I have ki- I have a kid, and my fiancé has a kid, and my our kids love Cool Cat. They really enjoyed it. So it's like, if you can make kids love what you're doing, and you can work in some kind of instructional thing into the entertainment that you're providing to those kids, you actually will have, like, provided a unique service that you don't get very often because kids generally hate instructional and educational films. They don't like them. They're bored by them. Uh, But if you can combine entertaining characters with positive instruction, you've actually, like, provided an important and rare service. But, like, Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus is not the way that you provide that service. Okay? You didn't instruct anybody on anything, and you failed to make a movie. So it it didn't work on an entertainment level, and it didn't work on an instructive level. It just didn't work on any level. The only level it worked on was for Jonathan and I to laugh at your failings. So whatever you were trying to do there, you you fucking failed. And you didn't even make any money on it. That's why there were only like 50 people in your like credits of people who donated $25. Man, 
You are lost. You know what's funny? <laughs> you are I, lost, Derek Savage. You need I help. I almost did the $25 thing. I almost did it. And then I saw that it was like a pre-order. And I'm like, I wonder. I don't know. I don't know if I should do it. And then I didn't do it and pre-ordered it. And I was, I proved myself right. Holy God. Yeah. No, anyway, no. dude, we want to help. This, is this like a three hour? Like, this is bad, but this yes. This is the longest is like long. ever old podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Look, dude, we want to help. We love you. Please don't be triggered by this, this podcast. Like, reach out if you if you want any assistance just looking over your script, you know, for the next cool cat. Like, we'll do it. It's okay. Just, like, we'll do it for free. We don't give a shit. Just, like, dude, please, please don't make dude. another one of these like, that are bad. Don't do it. Dude, my final remark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this podcast was so long like i feel like this is the one where there's gonna be like the edited version and then there's gonna be like the director's cut that's like three hours long i don't know how i'm gonna edit all this i might just leave it i might just leave it dude i don't care i think there were some inappropriate parts that need to be i did need to edit out some inappropriate parts but besides (laughs) that I will keep in all the moments where you oh. said Derek Chauvin instead of Derek Savage. Oh, no, not... Oh, no. <laughs> all three times you did it. I'll keep it in. Anyway. We yeah, got- but I don't want Derek Savage, if he hears this, to be like, he's comparing me to Derek Chauvin. You I'm did not. compare him. No. You well, said his movie was as bad as Derek Chauvin. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Derek Savage, what Derek Chauvin did was so much worse than what you've done. Okay, please. He was being hyperbolic and in bad taste. It's okay. No, I was just mixing up the names because I've been no, watching. You, earlier, Dude, I you, spent the last week, like two weeks, watching the Derek Chauvin trial. Like I no I earlier have the name you on my said mind. no earlier you said. This is almost, you said, like, this is just as bad or something like that. Maybe that's I'm a, wrong. I don't know. It's a joke that you were supposed to cut out. But, okay. <laughs> and, uh, all anyway. right. Oh. <laughs>